into the pandemic now, and I call it being under house arrest with the COVID out there. But, you know, there's that idea that we'll all feel at peace when this is over. And I don't know if it's nervous energy that happens when we're stuck at home a lot, or if it's boredom, but how many of you have gotten into your addictions and gained at least 10 pounds? Am I the only one, you know? We do things like that, but we're not feeling peace. And, you know, it's not just COVID, it's everything in life that we think is supposed to be a certain way before we can feel peace. I used to think, well, I'll be at peace when I can retire. I'll be at peace all the time then, 24 hours a day, because I'll be retired. But the gift of COVID has shown me that if I didn't have my work during this time, I would have gone crazy. Thank God I have my work to do during this time. And the point I'm making is, peace of mind doesn't come from what we think is supposed to happen, from where we think we're supposed to be. It's a beginning place of finding it, centering in it, and then our life begins to reflect it. So the gift during this time for me has been to go deeper, to really explore now, what do I really believe? Do I really believe in the power of all that outer chaos right now, or do I believe in the power of the presence, which has more power? In which am I going to place my fear and my choices for peace? You know, one of the great lines in The Course of Miracles is, think not you understand anything until you pass the test of perfect peace. Think not you understand anything until you pass the test of perfect peace. Well, are we in trouble this year or what? <laughs> There's an Eastern author by the name of S. Warren who once wrote a book called Strength in the Storm. And he had a friend that went on two different ocean voyages, on ocean liners. And the first one, there was a storm. And the boat was just going like this and this and the storm. And he was so seasick, it was a horrible experience. And then on his way back, he was again on an ocean liner. But this time, even though there was another storm, the boat seems to be steady, and he didn't get seasick. And so he went to one of the uh, workers on the ship, and he said, what was the difference? How come I didn't get sick this time? What's the difference? And they said, well, this ship has stabilizers on it. It has stabilizers. That's why. And that's what the gift of peace is for us. It's that stabilizing presence in our life no matter what outer storms are going on in the world, no matter what chaos is out there, we have the power to stabilize how we feel, how we react, and how we walk through each situation. And the test of how, what level you're at and how much you can sustain peace, and this one is terribly embarrassing for me too, is how long can you sit in a quiet room all by yourself? How long can you just sit there and enjoy the absolute quiet in a room all by yourself? Now, I can do that for a while, but then all of a sudden you get a little fidgety, the urge to do something, like go get something to eat, or I've got to talk to somebody, I've got to call somebody, I've got to do something. <clears throat> What is your level? How long can you sit in a quiet room all by yourself? Wow, what a test of perfect peace, isn't it? Eric Tolle talked about it another way, Eckhart Tolle. He said, if you can be at ease with yourself when you're alone, or if you can't, I'm sorry, I'm getting this all messed up today, Eckhart Tolle, if you cannot be at ease with yourself when alone, you will seek a relationship to cover up your unease. You can be sure that the unease will then reappear in some other form within the relationship. And you'll probably hold your partner responsible for it. Anybody relate to that? Oh, I'm feeling at ease today. It must be your fault. Can't be in me, right? Who are you blaming for your unease? And 
Matthew 10, 36, we're told, a man's foes shall be of his own household. Not meaning your physical house, but your own consciousness. My foes are all in here. And if I'm not at peace, it's because of something in there. What in you is robbing your disease, your peace of mind? And we can't force it, we can't make it happen. A Zen student once asked his master teacher, how long will it take for me to become enlightened if I practice diligently? And the master said, well, maybe 10 years. And he said, well, what if I double my efforts? And the master said, well, 20 years. <laughs> you know, what he was really saying is it's not human effort. It's not all that effort that we humans put into things. It's not about the effort of doing. Think not you understand anything until you pass the test of perfect peace. And that has to go from the head to the heart. Not what I think about peace, not what I think peace is, not talking about peace, but how does it feel in here? Do I really know my union with the divine so that on those ships on the ocean when the storm is raging out there, I can still feel the stabilizing effect of my peace of mind that I choose, that I choose. Hard to believe we can choose it. And I've shared with you before the first time it was proven to me how we can choose peace after my recovery from chemotherapy, which really messed up my body chemistry, chemotherapy, did all the drugs. <laughs> and so I went to get some biofeedback training because I was told, well, you can bring your body back into that level of peace through biofeedback. And so they hooked me up to this device where they had this arrow. And when I would take it into those, my, what do they call the alpha states, beta states, theta, whichever one it is, that is that higher peaceful state of mind, as soon as I made that arrow go there, I felt peace. And I was so empowering to know that, oh, you can choose peace no matter what's going on. Such a power, such a power, no matter what your life is, is it, uh, showing you. You know, many people think, oh, if I just win the lottery, don't we all wish we could just win the lottery? But that's not going to bring you peace because what you're really wanting is to win the lottery so that you'll have peace of mind instead of having peace of mind first and then allowing your life to reflect whatever that means. Neil Donald Walsh in his books often says that when we're not feeling peace, it's because we're centered in the outer, not the inner, in those fear-based dramas, those thoughts of separation, and reacting rather than centering. So easy to react rather than centering. And you know, one thing I've, I've learned, some of you may be able to relate to this, that age has an advantage. As I'm getting older, I'm becoming more peaceful. We were, uh, Michael and I, before we came to Tennessee, had one last hamburger at the Red Robin. I don't know if they have Red Robins in Tennessee, but they make the best burgers. And so we ordered from our waitress, and she seemed really flustered. She was on the edge of hysteria. And we asked her, are you okay? What's going on you? And she explained to me in her young, uh, energized voice, she said the night before, when she left work, she had parked her car out back of the Red Robin and decided to leave it there while she and her friends went off somewhere else. And then early in the morning when she came back to get her car, she found that during the night, a drunk driver that was driving too fast on the freeway left the freeway, literally flew off the freeway and landed right on top of her car and smashed it. And she was still a bit hysterical. Now, we sympathize with her, of course, but we also chuckled a little bit at her youth and how when we were younger, we would have probably been frustrated and all flustered as well. But the older we get, you know, at our age now, something like that happens and it's like, hello, Prudential, we got a problem. <laughs> Take care of it, you know. 
but how when you're young, before you know that you can choose a different reaction. You know, we think we have to react in that kind of way. Anyway, she was a dear soul, and we prayed for her, and I wish her well as we finish our hamburgers. <laughs> Isaiah 35 says, It is in quiet and confidence shall be your strength. In the quiet, in that confidence. And during this time of COVID, we can choose how we're going to walk through this with peace or anxiety. Choose this day who you will serve. The God of peace or the God of anxiety. It's our choice. An old Zen joke gave us clues. There was a sign on the monastery. They were searching for new monks. And the sign said, inquire within. <laughs> You'll get that at three this morning. <laughs> inquire within. The Zen student said to his master, is it okay to use email? And he said, sure, but no attachments. <laughs> attachments. <laughs> what are you attached to during this time? Are you attached to peace or are you attached to the fear and the anxiety over COVID? We can choose. Doesn't mean we don't take precautions. It doesn't mean we don't wear our masks, wash our hands, keep social distancing. But we choose peace in the midst of it to stabilize the ship of our soul as we walk through this time together. Another thing that can knock us off our peace of mind, do you have the need to be right about something? Do you have the need to be right? One of my Facebook friends said, this Christmas in lieu of gifts, I'm deciding to give everyone my opinion. <laughs> Are you giving that for Christmas this year? Of course, the miracles again says, do you want to be at peace or do you want to be right? It's your choice. It's your choice. The older I get, again, when I was younger, I felt the need to be right. The older I get, it's not so important anymore. I can choose peace instead. You know, all these wonderful Christmas carols, and we thank you, Katie, for bringing your gift today to singing them. They make peace sound so wonderful and so sweet and quiet and gentle. But I always say peace is a place of power where you become one with the synergy of the universe and the universe then comes to support you in that place of peace. Even Lao Tzu said to the mind that is still, the entire universe surrenders. Wow. Jesus knew that. He came and was called the Prince of Peace. He was called the Prince of Peace, but he also said, I have come with a sword that will divide you, brother against brother. You know, families will be divided because the truth, that sort of truth that he bought, if you you know, some people accept it, some people don't, it divides. So his peace that he brought was not an outer peace, but again, that inner peace. He said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, not as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. How? Quieting the mind, centering the heart, and trusting in our union with the divine. Unity's own Charles Fillmore said, by quieting the mental realm, we arrive at the threshold of being, centered in the Holy of Holies, where noiselessly, silently, a mighty work is always going on. God works in the stillness. Peace be still. Peace be still. Let's take that quietly into our hearts in prayerful surrender. Again, there's no effort to peace. There's no struggling to get it. There's no waiting for something to happen but a gentle and simple letting go. I release and let go of all those attachments to how the world should look. Of all those things I'm struggling with, I release, I let go, and I allow that presence to bring me to that place of peace where all the power and the synergy of the universe supports me, and I allow it 
simply by living and having my being in it. It unfolds effortlessly with grace and with ease. I become a blessing to the world in peace, in hope, in faith, in gratitude and joy. We say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the nature of the Christ, and so it is, so it truly is. Amen. Ah, okay. Well, this is the time in our service where we bless our love offerings, and we thank you for your support, for those who are continuing to support Unity Church of the Cumberlands during this time. If at home you would like to donate, simply go on our website, unitycookville.org, and click on the Donate button, or you can mail your gift to 823 East 10th Street, Cookville, Tennessee, 38501. And if you're here, the baskets in the back of the room provide that opportunity as well. Meanwhile, let us pray our offertory blessing together and with that great feeling of peace together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. And once more, let's stay with that thought of gratitude just for a moment. Grateful for you being here today. Grateful for this church. Grateful for this wonderful city of Cookville, Tennessee, that is such a light and such a blessing to the world. And we relax into that peace. We go out today in that centered state of peace to be a blessing to the world. And we just say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the nature of the Christ. And so it is. Amen.